Welcome to the very first video of this playlist. This is going to go into how to set up EVNG um, Community Edition on VMware Workstation Player 16. But this is applicable to earlier versions as well. So if you're running VMware Player version 14 or 15, uh, the setup process is going to look pretty much exactly the same. Um, before we start off, the whole goal of this is for you to be able to run EVNG so that you can import virtual equipment to lab uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to give to you. So I'm going to provide lab files that you can import into EVNG and work with me through the material. Um, EVNG, you can get it by going to the website eve-ng.net. You hit enter, it brings up this website, it explains what EVE is. There is a professional edition, but this costs additional money and you need to, it's like a yearly fee that you pay for this, but they do have some special sometimes during November for Black Friday, but don't worry too much about it. We're just going to look at community edition, which is totally free. So you can go to the download and from the downloads, if we just scroll down, there's a free Eve community edition version. So this is what we're going to download and we're going to download the ISO again with VMware uh, workstation player. There's also a link here. Uh, where you can get it to download it and install it uh, but i'm not going to go into that i'm just going to show you how to install EVNG on your computer so we're going to download this iso so this is just a mega share directory so i'm going to download it and then i'm just going to pause the video until the download is finished and then we'll continue with the rest of the uh, video so i'm just running the download be right back all righty let's continue with the video my download has finished so i will just save the file and then this should be in my downloads folder. So I'll just navigate to there and I see I've got this Eve ISO that I can use inside VMware player. So we're going to do that now. I'm just going to navigate to VMware player and there is my Eve NG pro VM that I've already got, but we're not going to be running that. We're just going to create a new virtual machine. And then I can specify that I want to use a I will install the operating system later. So we'll, we'll just use the default option, click next. I can put this on as Linux on Ubuntu 64 bit, go next. Virtual machine name, we can call this whatever we want, but I'll call this uh, Eve NG Community Edition. And I'll continue, but we, we might want to just change our drive. So let me just select the E drive because this will be, or, or my F drive, I've got a, well, the E drive's got plenty of space. The, this is more or less just where we're going to be storing this VM. So I'm gonna store this in the E, e drive. Um, how much space do I want to allocate for this VM? So there is documentation on the Eve cookbook, um, but this is depending on how much space you have available on your computer. If you have like a terabyte, then you could safely give yourself a hundred gig. But um, I'm just going to start off quite small. So I'll just use a 30 gig drive and that should be more than sufficient for all of the stuff that we'll be labbing. Um, and we can just continue, we can go next. We can customize our hardware if we want. And this is important because this is where we can specify how much RAM we're going to allocate to the VM. I think typically you want around eight gig if possible. If you don't have eight gig available, uh, you could do four gig, it should work, but it's gonna run like, it might run slow or out of resources. But I've got a quite a beefy computer, so I could maybe push this up to like where this blue arrow is, but let's make it eight gig. Let, let, let's assume that I'm also just um, using a very normal computer I've got eight gig of RAM, I'm gonna use that. Processors, so this is dependent on your machine as well. If you've got more cores, then you can obviously add more processing. So I might just add 12, but let's leave it on two and see what the effect is. And then we also just need to make sure that we select virtualize Intel VT-X or or EPT or AMD uh, dash V. So this is something that is set in your BIOS of your computer. If, if it's not set, you might just have to um, do that, but I'm not going to go step by step showing you how to do the BIOS stuff. But by default, this, this is typically already enabled. If it isn't, then just, I'd suggest Googling how to enable this on your uh, motherboard if it supports it. And if it doesn't, then unfortunately, 
you might not be able to follow along with the EVNG guides exactly. <clears throat> and now the important bit is we go to this new CD dash uh, or slash DVD SATA, and now we're going to use an ISO image. And I'm going to browse for the images and I'm going to go to my downloads directory and I'll find the ISO that I downloaded and I'll put that in. So think of this as a virtual CD that we're putting in the CD-ROM. Um, network adapter, I might just leave this as a NAT, so don't worry too much about this bit. The CD-ROM is the most important bit. Um, with that done, we should just be able to close that and finish this off. And then we've got this Eve NG Community Edition that started up here. And if I play the virtual machine, it should actually start up and now it's in the initial setup phase. So let me just maybe make the screen a bit bigger. Uh, there we go. And we can navigate with our keys in our keyboard. So I'll leave this as English. I will hit the enter key to continue. And then we get a few different options. Install EVM, install Eve Bear, or rescue a broken system. So we're not going to install Bear or rescue a broken system. We're just going to install EVM. Uh, Eve Bear is basically like installing this on a physical server so that the server itself is Eve. When you hit the power button, it's not a VM, it's Eve that's um, being installed on an actual tin. It's, it's installed on an actual device. But we'll install this on a VM, so I'll hit enter. And we're just going to follow along with the prompts. I'm just going to pause the video until the next prompt. Oh, never mind, we've already got the first prompt. All right. You can see you can use tab to move, space to select, or enter, activate. So we'll just select uh, English. I'll hit enter for it. We can set our time zone. So I'm going to select South Africa because that's where I'm from. But if you're in a different time zone, you can obviously select it or specify it. And now it's just detecting the hardware. This is going to be pretty quick. So we're just waiting for the next prompt now. Um, there we go. And if you see me maybe pausing and unpausing the video, it's just for the sake of, um, you know, prompts that we're just waiting for. All right, now we can give it a host name. I'll just leave this as eve-ng. I'll hit enter. I'm not going to use any proxy, so I'm just going to continue. I hit enter there. Here we can set up like configuration tasks. I can tell it to possibly just install security updates automatically. But if you selected the first option, that doesn't really change anything. <laughs> so many things that it's actually installing in the background. But just note that this isn't the, this is like the front end installer where it's copying all of the files and actually getting it ready to install. And we're actually going into the real install now. So I'm going to hit continue. Um, but what we could do is, let's just hit continue, we, we don't need to worry about it. We could remove the ISO, but it's not going to change anything. All right, now it's going to boot up. I can just hit Ubuntu, and now it's actually starting the, the setup. So this is like the Linux side that's happening. So I'm just going to pause the video until we get to the next prompt. So see you in a little bit. All right, the prompt has finished. We are nearly done with the setup. Um, we, we actually didn't get any other prompts, we just asked to log in. And the default user is root, and the default password is Eve. You'll you'll note that there is a 192.168.74.139 address that's been assigned by DHCP. It's just an IP address that's randomly assigned. You might get a different IP. You might get like 120 or or, or whatever. It's just an IP address that's assigned when you do the setup. All right, I'll hit Eve, and now we get another prompt to actually finish the setup. Now it's going to ask us, what do you want to make the root password? Type the root password so you can change that. But I'll just leave that as Eve. Um, let me just click here. Eve. Uh, what's the host name? I'll leave this as Eve-ng. I'll leave the domain. I won't change anything. I'll leave this uh, on DHCP, but you can set it to static and then you can make the IP address something else. Uh, but whenever you boot Eve up, it will show you what the IP address is. Um, type in the host name or IP address of the NTP. So I'm gonna leave this empty. We're going to direct connection. I hit enter and now it's finishing the last bit of the setup. 
And this is actually it. We're going to get booted again to Eve and then we can log in. And I'm going to show you how cool this is in a second. Um, so it's just doing its last bit, but the setup is essentially done now. You don't need to stress. You've done a great job. There we see we can log in again. So if I type here root and Eve, I'm logged in and now the VM is up and running. Again, note the IP address 192.168.74.139. That is the IP address that Eve received from a DHCP. So if I go into my browser, all right, let's go into the Eve servers IP 192.168.74.139. I hit enter and then I get prompted for some login details. I'm connecting on HTTP again. It's not HTTPS. I'm going to make this. Uh, so if you log on here, it's not, it's actually not root. It's Eve or admin you log on and the password is just Eve. And it's very important that you connect using Firefox. If you use Chrome or some other browser, um, some of the pop-ups might not work correctly. So please use Firefox whenever you connect to the VM. And now we have this EVNG um, front end. And this is where we're going to import our labs and create lab files and have a great time. So if you got through to here, great job. Uh, if you were having some issues with the VM, sometimes I find, but this is more or less an issue that I've only recently encountered. If I go into my network um, connections and I just disable and re-enable my VM net adapters because these are the adapters that are, are connecting to your Eve server, um, then I can connect to the Eve server. If I but it, it it happens rarely, but it's typically not the case. This is just something that's been happening with me recently, um, but this is more or less on my machine. Anyways, thank you for watching and let's get into some good fun labbing pretty soon. See ya.